Howdy folks, Eric Darling here with Eric Darling Data, and I wanted to record a quick video about uh, eager index spools and um, a reason why they may occur, even though you've created an index that is perhaps nearby uh, what your query is asking for. Now, uh, I've vlogged before about why eager index pools might pop up if you've got no useful index or even if you have a very useful index that the optimizer ignores but this is kind of a th weird third case and I've seen things like this happen maybe when someone uh, listens to C1 of SQL servers missing index requests and the order of the columns and the key of the index um, which are just in uh, which are only supplied to the missing index request uh, in the, by the ordinal position in the table uh, might not be the most efficient, effective, happy index for SQL Server. So in this case, uh, I have a query that is selecting data from the user's table and then cross-applying that, uh, cross-applying to the badges table. And we want to get the top n per group. This is what we're doing in here, this, this little chunk of query. So we're selecting the top one badge name from badges correlated on user ID ordered by date descending. And this is an okay query, but it's not really a great index because we ha we lead our index with name, then user ID, then date descending. If we look at the badges table, you know, we might see, oh, well, you know, I don't know, maybe SQL Server gave us a stun missing index request and now we didn't make our query any better. Uh, so what you might see here is uh, because we have to correlate on user ID in order by date descending, but name is the first column in the index, we're kind of buried, these two columns are kind of buried behind it. We don't have an equality predicate on it. We had an, if we, our where clause was also like, and badge name equals the happy camper, then we might, then we could seek to here and then seek to here and then we would have this in order, but we don't. So we can easily display this, but it's not helpful as a first column in the index. Now, why this is kind of funny is because we have this index and SQL Server uses the index that we created on, on this index over here called Squirrel in order to feed into this index. So it's basically taking this index and re rearranging the columns in it. If we zoom in a little bit and we look at what it's doing, we're, it, it, it creates that index keyed on user ID and then it has name and date in the in the include is it included columns eager index pool structures are effectively clustered indexes but you can think of them the same way as like a non-clustered index where the seek predicates are key columns and the output list are includes it's just like if you created a cluster like clustered index on user id name and date would technically be includes in that in that index so sql server does this down here because we have a nested loops join here SQL Server is estimating that we would have to loop 13,659 times, and SQL Server does not want to take 13,569 rows from here and then scan the entire badges table that many times. So it scans the badges, the, this index on the badges table once. Right? We have one one number of execution, one scan, and just like in other 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 times when we create a uh, an eager index pool, even though the plan says it's parallel, all the rows end up on a single thread, which is also which is no bueno as far as I'm concerned. They, these eager index pools always build serially. So we build that we build that index, which allows SQL Server to seek into this index 13,659 times, do a quick top one sort, and then return data out. The reason why I write a lot of queries that show stuff like this using cross apply is because cross-apply most often optimizes as a nested loops join. When, because it optimizes as a nested loops join, we kind of get the effect in our query plan where SQL Server is going to do something repetitive down here. And SQL Server uses spools to sort of mitigate the effect of uh, repetitive behavior. So eager index spools, table spools, stuff like that. All, the, all those things come into play on the inner side of nested loops. And it's just a lot easier to get SQL to say, I'm going to use a nested loops join when I use cross apply. It's simply a demo writing effect. It's not because cross apply is bad. It's not because nested loops join is bad, even though it kind of is. 
<laughs> I'm kidding. Nested loops joined is fine. Fine, all you nice OLT people, P OLT people out there with your nested loops joins. Uh, it's just to kind of show you that a lot of times on the inner side of nested loops, in other words, on this side of nested loops, a lot of awkward things can happen. In this case, SQL Server took an index that we thought might be okay, or that rather, I don't know, maybe we got a missing index request that said name, user ID, date, and we were like, ah, we'll just create this index blindly and. <laughs> That will all our will be faster. And then this query got slower because we forgot a semicolon. So uh, in eager index pools may also happen be t just because you made a bad index or because you made an inopportune index for a specific query. In this case, it would make total sense if we just reorganized this index a little bit. If we took name from here and we stuck it over here and then we said, oh, I don't know, what's that thing uh, with... Uh, I don't have SQL prompt over here, so you'll have to excuse the crappy typing. Drop existing equals on. And uh, we, we reorganize this index a little wee little bit. And you see that that took four seconds, which is a lot faster than the 18 seconds that it took for SQL Server to create that, that index pool. If we reorganize our index a little bit, we can avoid this. Avoid, we can avoid <laughs> minimizing SQL prompt. We can avoid... <laughs> the index pool altogether and have a much faster query. Anyway, uh, just a quick example of how SQL Server may rearrange a non-clustered index. It doesn't always have to just get everything from a clustered index to uh, feed into an eager index pool. So thank you for watching. Uh, um, thank you for bearing with me <laughs> as I, um, I don't know, messed up several things <laughs> in there and had some incomplete thoughts and, and blabbered a little bit like I'm doing right now. So I'm going to cut this short and get ready to record another video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one, assuming that you uh, uh, can still tolerate me after this. Goodbye.